Hello dear students, welcome to another history class with Miss Joyce. In today's lesson, you will learn about the Urobo and the Ijo people. We are still discussing non-centralized states in pre-colonial Nigeria. And under today's topic, we are going to talk about the location of the Urobos and the Ijo people. We'll discuss the origin. We we'll would also talk about the economic activities that they engaged in and lastly we will talk about the socio-political structure of the robots and the Ijaws in pre-colonial Nigeria. The Robo people inhabit the western side of the Niger Delta and they are bounded in the north by the Benin people, in the south by Ijo and in the east by the Abo people. They also have the Ishakiris as their neighbor in the western part of the Niger Delta. The Roma people are heterogeneous people, that is, they shared similarities in their social political organization. And they have close similarities with their neighbors who are also related linguistically. They speak the Robo language and they are a major ethnic group in delta state nigeria and like i said earlier they are located in the southern region of nigeria next up let's talk about the tradition of origin of the robo people the robo people have various traditions of origin that is different accounts on their tradition of origin but for the purpose of this study we are going to talk about just two of these traditions of origin the first tradition of origin posits that the robo people lived together with the benin in the great benin empire now it is alleged that they migrated from the kingdom due to the harsh treatment by some rulers in benin empire the robo clans of abraka agbon and olomo are claimed to have founded by migrants from the Benin kingdoms and they departed the Benin Empire during the reign of Oba Erika. Another tradition of origin posits that the Urobo people originated from Ijo land. Now, there are some towns in Urobo land, towns such as Ogele, that posit that they were products of Ogele, who was the son of Tarakiri and immigrated as a result of population pressure out of their homeland with two of his brothers, Agbara and Ogo. And the combination of Ugeli, Agbara and Ogo were known as the Obia clan, which was established in a new location called Urubo land. Next up, let's talk about the economic activities of the Urobo people in pre-colonial Nigeria. The major economic activity of the Urobo people was farming. They cultivated various food crops ranging from cassava, maize, yam, vegetable, plantain, and processing of cassava into starch. The Urobos live in the riverine areas and they were good fishermen with traps net and pond management they participated actively in palm oil production and eat trade with the europeans as the middlemen they also participated in trading buying and selling of smoked fish cassava products salt and palm oil the robbers never participated actively in the transatlantic slave trade because they were shielded from the coast by the Ijo and the Shakiri people of the Niger Delta. The social political organization of the Urobo people. Some Urobo clans organize their government around the traditional ruler called the Ovi, who is the king. This could be the influence of Benin political system of administration or the influence of their origin and contact. Now, the Council of Chiefs and the title holders assisted the OVA in the administration of the clan. We are going to talk about the political structure of the Europa people. The first we'll discuss is the village, and this refers to the smallest social unit that was headed by the father, who catered for the welfare of the family. 
the village was made up of people from the same lineage that were blood related in different compound number two ekpakoro this refers to the council of elders and they were responsible for the governance and the administration of the village they were also in charge of the general welfare of the people in the village number three the otota this referred to the spokesman of the village or the clan and it presided during village meetings or important assembly of elders and the rulers it must be an eloquent and intelligent figure with charismatic personality he conducted cross-examination during judicial trials of cases that were brought before the council of elders the next we'll talk about is the iletu the this is the head of the war leaders and is called the iletu he controlled the military unit of the village system he trained and equipped his men for any military assignment that was approved by the council of elders number five a home warrior and this refers to a council of titled men they have formed the Eguarelvi, which played similar roles in the village system this society was occupied by personalities with some level of wealth and the ceremonies for the Ehonwanre attracted a lot of festiv- festivities and distinguished regalias. The Ehonwanre are also known as Ilorogun in some robo clans. Number 6. Otu Iletu. This refers to a unit that is made up of age grade or age group and they performed a wide range of functions ranging from community service to military functions. They also acted as security agents to the council of elders in the village and they implemented the decisions of the OV and the title holders on behalf of the community. They also was the age grade for the young folks called Otsuimitete. Number 7. Okakoro And this refers to the oldest man in the village or the clan in Uroboland. He was the head of the Otuekpako Council of Elders in the village and the Otuekpako was a gerontocratic union made up of elderly men. The group performed administrative and judicial functions. The Ijo people of the Niger Delta. The Ijos are indigenous of the present day Baeta Delta, Rivers, Akwaibom, and some parts of Edo states of Nigeria. Their language is synonymous with their name, the Ijo language. The Ijo are referred to as the water people due to their geographical location, the religious and traditional beliefs. The Ijos are believed to have migrated from their original homeland around places like Ogobiri, Ibikiri, Oporama, Oboloma, and others to their various settlements today. Next up, let's talk about the economic activities of the Ijo people of the Niger Delta. The first we'll talk about is fishing. The Ijos were good in fishing since they lived in the coastal areas of the Niger Delta. They were seriously engaged in fishing. They formed fishing village in the creek, the rivers and at the Atlantic coast. They used nets, traps and baskets for catching fishes. Another activity that they were also engaged in was salt production. The Ijo people also produce salt from the roots of the mangrove trees in the Atlantic coast. They were also involved in boat building or canoe carving. The Ijo people were experts in building of boats. They also built canoes and carved smaller canoes that were used by fishermen. They were also involved in poultry and palm wine tapping. They produced earthen pots such as pots and other household utensils with clay soil readily available in their domain. The pots were useful in the collection and storage of palm wine that were tapped from the raffia palm in the creeks and the coastal areas. These palm wine were fermented and processed into local gin 
that is also known as Ogogoro or Kain Kain as it was known in different dialects in Nigeria. Another activity that the Ijo people were good at was water transportation and this was because of the knowledge of the creeks and the rivers in the Niger Delta which the Ijo's have great advantage over others as navigators. This medium was useful in the sales and the capture of slaves for sales to European merchants in the coast before the abolition of the Atlantic slave trade. Next up, we are going to talk about the social political organization of the Ijo people. The first we'll talk about is the village. The Ijo people lived in villages that were made up of blood related persons or kinsmen. The village was usually made up of fishing groups. Number two, Amayanabo. He was the appointed leader of the fishing village and he presided over the village assembly with series of transformation in the Niger Delta during the legitimate trade era. The Amayanabo position was transformed into that of a king and this was to enable him control and represent the village as middlemen before the European merchants. And as a result of wealth, the Amayanabo also became very powerful with many servants and war kings. Number three, Ama Okosobie. This refers to the elders of the village in the Ijo community of the central Niger Delta. They settled conflicts and problems in the community and in families. Number four, the house system. And the city states were a combination of houses. The houses were made up of hundreds or even thousands of people. Each house as a unit had its own war canoe. There were house heads who were second in rank to the king or the Amayanambo. So far in today's lesson, we have discussed the Urobo people, we have also talked about the Ijo people. We've looked at the location where the Urobos are located and we said they are located in Delta State and they speak the Urobo language. We have also talked about the socio-political structure of the Robo people. We've discussed the origin of the Robos, and we've also talked about the economic activities that the Robo people engaged in in pre-colonial Nigeria. We have talked about the Ijaws and where they are located, where we said they're located in present-day Bayesa State, Delta State, River State, Akwai Bomb and some parts of Edo states in Nigeria. We've also went further to discuss their economic activities that they engage in in pre-colonial Nigeria and we've also talked about the socio-political structure of the Ijo people. Now with this we've come to the end of our class for today until we meet again in the next class. Goodbye and stay safe.